This week, we're diving deep into the brain. We're going to learn about how Ottawa-made startups and research are digging into issues like concussions and ADHD, this week on Tagopia Live. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Techopia Live. I'm your host, Craig Lohr, the editor here at Techopia. We are back at the University of Ottawa's STEM building, where the Faculty of Engineering students and professors do most of their research and studying. Uh, there are plenty of students walking by, so you might catch a little bit of chatter on the way. Uh, this week we are talking about brain health technology with a couple of researchers and a new startup uh, here in Ottawa. Uh, from Neurovine, we have the CEO, Ashley Kennedy. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, it's nice to be here. And just to her right, we have Aladdin Ashalabi, one of the PhD students for the Faculty of Engineering. Thank you very much for joining us, Aladdin. Uh, now, Ashley, I want to start here. Uh, the area of brain health we're talking about with Neurovine is concussions, and specifically the issue with quantifying uh, concussions in patient recovery. Can you tell me a little bit about what the issue is that Neurovine's solving? Yeah, certainly. So physicians and sports medicine doctors all encounter the same problem in their practices. Yeah. They diagnose a concussion and then they send their patients home to recover. And because brain health is invisible, it's really hard for these patients to recover properly. Mm. They often overexert and end up regressing in their recovery process. And that can set you back weeks or months. Mm -hmm. And so the technology that we're building is a real-time quantification of brain health um, it tracks metrics as you improve, and it gives you real-time feedback to say, stop doing what you're doing, it's causing damage. Mm -hmm. And why is it that uh, this hasn't been done before? What is the technology that we're applying here that allows us to have this personalized uh, and real-time response to concussion recovery? So there's a few things. Um, Certainly technological advan the advances that have happened in the past five years have allowed us to have this real-time data mm -hmm. um, and create this digital health platform. Um, another important key for us is the HIPAA-compliant cloud storage um, that's allowed us to store people's data in a safe way. Um, and finally, the machine learning and artificial intelligence advancements. Um, have really streamlined this, this process for us. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, but I'm going to get you to pass the microphone to Aladdin over here because concussions are not the only areas of brain health that are being uh, disrupted or, or, or new applications being formed uh, thanks to new technology. Aladdin, as I understand it, you're working in the, area, the world of ADHD. Uh, what is the technology that you're applying here and, and how is it uh, being manifested? I believe it's in actually a video game setting. Yes, so we try to integrate um, different fields together. So we integrated uh, games with the brain uh, computer interface devices in order to uh, diagnose ADHD uh, children uh, in early stages in a, in, a way that, in a way that they could uh, engage more in the game and also uh, could put more effort in improving their attention states. Mm. So the game we're building is, uh, is mainly, it's hands-free, so it's, uh, mm. the, the game is fully controlled by the brain. Uh, it's, uh, so it associates a couple um, frequencies of the brain signals to uh, commands that could be sent to the computer and then uh, control that actual avatar to move forward or, back or backwards. We have also uh, integrated other uh, gyroscopes so the, the turning of the character can, can be um, also very smooth. And so we, we're trying in, in, uh, in the product we're building uh, to in increase the engagement of, of ADHD uh, okay. children uh, and putting more effort and paying more attention and focusing more on the character in, a, in order to make it uh, move or like uh, uh, fulfill the, the requirements of the mm -hmm. game. So. And, the, and there's also an aspect, as I understand it, of, of being able to track um, along the matrix of, of ADHD how well someone is, is able to, to pay attention. Is that, is that correct? Yes. So um, uh, while building the game, like one of the, one of the requirements that we have put is that um, we put the factor of attention uh, to control the, the character. So uh, the more the, the, the player would put attention to the, to the device or to the character itself, the faster the, the character will go. So that will engage uh, the players to put more attention 
and not to frustrate themselves or like um, uh, do it as at, a, at like a, a clinic or something. Mm -hmm. And so the, all the factors, all the um, uh, design choices that we have uh, chosen was built on the, the idea of uh, making that therapeutic system very convenient for students and children uh, uh, besides having the fact that it improves attention and engagement. Mm -hmm. um, I'll get you to pass the microphone back here to, to Ashley, but uh, one of the things I just find very interesting about this field, talking about brain health and technology, where they intersect, is it's very clear to hear about the applications and how they might be able to use, how they might be able to help patients, students, young children, uh, maybe who have suffered concussions or are struggling with ADHD, to improve their daily lives uh, through either fun games or through a simple interface uh, through an app, something easy to understand. Um, Ashley, I know there are uh, specific applications that we're looking at with Neurovine in the world of sports and, and especially football. Um, I know it was a personal story to you. Your father was a professional football player and that brought you into the world of, of concussions and neuroscience. Um, what are some of the, some of the uh, potential studies that we're doing here or for future applications in the world of sport? Yeah, so sport certainly is um, kind of at the forefront of social media right now. Uh, the impact of major concussions is really well understood, um, at least it, the relationship to, from, with concussion and long-term brain health. Um, but what's really interesting is the subconcussive blows that you would sustain, um, say, hitting a soccer ball. Um, and so we're able to monitor brain health after even smaller impacts than what would typically be diagnosed as a concussion um, and prevent the long-term accumulation of, of minor bra uh, brain injuries, basically. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to the sports vertical, uh, there's certainly application for us in the military as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it's thankfully coming to the forefront of, of their mandate as well in the mm -hmm. military. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's, there, there's another layer on this, and that is the societal uh, understanding of CTE, what contact sports and, and dangerous uh, careers, like a career in the military, can do to our brain health. So uh, I'm excited to see where Neurovine can go uh, as well with, with research like Aladdin's uh, and, and better understanding the brain, better managing it after a traumatic event or a, a, an illness like ADHD. So thank you both so much. Both really appreciate you coming on to, to share your stories today. Yeah, this was fun. Thanks, Craig. Awesome. Now, uh, before I let you go, I want to take a quick moment and thank some of our sponsors without whom Techopia Live would not be possible. I want to start with Number Crunch, offering virtual CFO services to SaaS firms. There's TD Bank, offering specialized programs for tech firms. There's Pearlie Robertson, Hilly McDougall, a leader in business and tech law. There's Stratford Managers, offering services to help you scale up your tech venture. There's KRP Properties, offering so much more than just space. And of course, we are here in the STEM building today, the home of the University of Ottawa's Faculty of Engineering, creating the next generation of technical talent. Now, Techopia Live is not just this fantastic show. We are also available online at obj.ca slash techopia with daily articles covering Ottawa's tech scene. You can also find us on social, on Facebook and Twitter, at Techopia OTT. And if you're watching us on YouTube, please leave us a like and a comment and subscribe if you'd like to see more of our weekly tech interviews. Apart from that, I just want to thank you very much for joining for us for this week's episode of Techopia Live. We'll be back next week, of course, with another episode. Hope to see you then. Bye-bye.